Have you forgotten the party of the second part? In there? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Barclay's in conference. Uh, I'll tell him you're here. Here, you just give him this. Drop that on his desk and you won't have to say a thing. Go on, I'll take full responsibility. Finally got here. You didn't have any trouble finding the place? No, I didn't have any. Sure, it didn't inconvenience no, you? No, not a bit. Just passing through, no doubt. I'm here at your invitation, Jared. Brett, you wild and wandering maverick. <laughs> what do you got to say for yourself? Why didn't you let me know you were coming? What? Miss a welcome like this? <laughs> you haven't changed a bit. Well, now that you're here, what are your plans? Just passing through, or do you plan to stay? Well, if I stay, can I make a place for myself? In this valley? Believe me, it's crying for men like you. It's your oyster. <laughs> Unum ad finum. <laughs> I've got some work to take care of. It won't take a minute. I'll meet you over at the hotel. We'll ride out to the house. You'll stay with us, of oh, course. Oh, I, I don't... Objections overruled. Good to have you here, Brett. Thank you, Counselor. Right. It's Skyler. Get word to him. I painted the zebra stripes on Professor Hamilton's old mare. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I huh? painted the stripes on the mare. You put the liniment in his bathwater. Oh, that's right. <laughs> How did you two ever graduate? Well, I just broke into an office and stole two diplomas. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Now, it wasn't all fun and games. Of course, it might have been for Brett here. He was kind of the brilliant type, just breezed through. I've often wondered why you never went into law. Well, I couldn't see myself clerking for a firm that might make me a junior partner in 20 years. So I traded the little my father left me for experience. Equal parts, vision, luck, a sense of timing. You attract fortune like a magnet. Cautions for the plotters. I leaped over their heads. Cattle, shipping, land. And now, Brett? Now, a breather. And then I think... Law? Ah, right here in this valley. If you can stand the competition, Jared. Competition? I'll send you the business. I'll even set you up an office space. Fair enough? That's more than generous. Brett, I think you'll find this whole valley is more than generous. Just give it a little bit of yourself and it'll never fail you. You'll see for yourself, Brett, in time. I hope so. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'd like to go and unpack before dinner. Well, I'd say he hasn't changed a bit. The rising star has become a comet. Do comets ever stay put? Well, I don't know. He just might this time. I 
wasn't sure Silas had put any towels in your room. I'm a very wasteful user of towels. Comes from living in so many hotel rooms. Thank you very much. You're very thoughtful. I recognized you the moment you arrived. There's a photograph of you and Jared in Mother's bedroom. Oh, yes. Don't tell me. In cap and gown, grinning like a couple of chimps. Mm-hmm. I must have changed a lot since then. Well, I don't think you'd paint zebra stripes on anyone's mare again, or, or climb an enormous mountain so that you and Jared could have it named after yourself. Well, I hope you like staying here as much as we love having you. Janet Bartley? That's right. My name is Monroe. Oh, you, uh, you don't know me. I'd like to talk to you for a few minutes. Some place where we uh, won't be disturbed. What about? Secret Service. Well, come in, Mr. Monroe. This way, please. It's a beautiful home, Mr. Bartley. Thank you. Mr. Barkley, you got a good friend visiting with you, name of Brett Schuyler. Now, don't confirm or deny, just let me do the talking. He was uh, moving around quite a piece before he came here. I know, because uh, I've been traveling that same route. And not that he knows that. I uh, wouldn't be much good at my job if he did. Interesting thing about Mr. Schuyler's travels, though, every place he's been, New Orleans, Cheyenne, Santa Fe, San Antonio, they've had a flock of these. Well, what about it? Well, it looks so good, it'd take an expert to tell it wouldn't. You better start traveling a different route, Mr. Monroe. Mr. Barkley. You're trailing the wrong man. Mr. Barkley, I got my family back east. Little place in Virginia. It's been over a, a twelfth month since I've seen them. I don't like it. But when I believe I'm right about a man, I'll stay with him until I catch him. All right, Mr. Monroe, I've heard your suspicions. Now, suppose you give me your evidence. I don't have any. Mr. Monroe, Brett Schuyler and I went through law school together. We roomed together, ate together, boned from the same books together. I know him as well as I know myself. Well, now, it's been quite a while since you've seen him. Now, what is it he's been doing, did he tell you? He did. Land, cattle, shipping. Oh. I never heard that he signed a deed or looked at a herd or boarded a ship. But if you are confident he is not my man, then you won't mind helping me. And just what is it you'd like me to do? Well, now, Skyler knows he's safe here as your guest. You, uh should have easy access to his belongings. There's a good possibility he's got that money concealed in his bag. I'll show yeah, you. I know, I know. It's a Judas trick. Call it what you like. But I wouldn't ask this of a man's best friend if I didn't think it was necessary. I'm staying at the hotel in Stockton.
Yes. Oh, Mr. Barkley. Well, you're just in time for a bite of lunch. Come on in, come on in. Here, pull up a chair. I'll send down for another portion. No, thanks. Hi. Yeah? Winnie. Take a look at these. It's in a border design. They usually come a cropper. Of course, uh, some are fancier than others. The genuine engraver, he don't mind how much time he puts in designing that lacy border there. Of course, the uh, counterfeit is uh, inclined to get a bit more impatient. Wants to get his hands on some real money. Especially when most folk can't tell the difference between the counterfeit and the real thing. And the fact that most banks print their own money. You found a flaw? No. Nothing counterfeit about these. These are all genuine. Give me a glass. Well, now, he's smarter than I thought. Or well, maybe you're just a little too eager to find a suspect, Milrow. Now, with all due respect to the Secret Service, I'd appreciate it if you'd take you and your suspicions right out of this valley. Mr. Barkley, I still feel I'm right about your friend. I'm going to stay with him till I get... a little bit early for the ladies. What do you say we step into my office over there and I'll buy you a drink? Fine. Kind of like old times, isn't it, Brett? Mm-hmm. Remember that jug we used to keep hidden at school? Yeah. Well, the whiskey has gone over the table since then. It sure has. Yes, sir, we got a lot of years to catch up on you and me. So, let's hear from my well-traveled friend. Thank you. I want an autobiographical report. Oh, I wouldn't know where to begin. Well, how about the Seven Seas, those ships of yours? Where did they sail? East Indies? Among other places. <laughs> Modern Marco Polo, huh? Or maybe I should say Richard Dana, two years before the mast. You know, he didn't follow his law career either, or get rich on his ships. But you? Well, yes. I did pretty well. <laughs> You know, I can see you now with a spyglass up to your eye, watching your ships come in, bulging with riches from the Orient. What were their names? Oh, they were just chartered, Jared. The Lotus, the Condor. Clipper ships? Steam. Oh, sure. They're faster, more profit, huh? Then what? You just traded it all for land and cattle, huh? One or the other, I, I don't remember. <laughs> oh, come on, boy. Jog your memory. The land first, I think. When? What year? What is this, Jared? A cross-examination? Well, I, I guess it kind of sounds like that, doesn't it? Say, I have some money I want to deposit in town. I'll introduce you at the bank in the morning. Fine. It's better than keeping it in the false bottom of my valise. You know, Brett, you decide to practice law here. You won't be starting from scratch, I promise you that. As a matter of fact, I'd be glad to have you come in with me. Oh, Jared. Now you think about it. I will. You are, Mr. Schuyler. Receipt for twenty thousand. Proud to have you as a valued customer of the bank. Roy. Mr. Schuyler is a new customer of ours. Roy, good friend of uh, Mr. Barclays. Yes, sir. Well, many thanks, Luther. 
Anything you do for Mr. Schuyler will be the same as if you're doing it for me. Always a pleasure. See you at home this evening. Right. Thank you, Jared. Roy will be finished with the count in a minute. I'll be transferring more of my money to Stockton and do most of my business through you, if you have the facilities. The valley's grown a lot since the Barclays settled here. And this bank's had to grow to keep up with it. Let me show you around. There's no branch of banking that we can't handle, Mr. Schuyler. Trust funds, loans, letters of credit, international currency exchange, expert valuations on produce, livestock, and the reserve in here for all contingencies. Mm -hmm. Money couldn't be safer if it was in the San Francisco Mint. People in the Valley like to know that. Big or small, they've learned to depend on this bank, never to lose a penny of their money. Say, this is high carbon steel. Well, now, there's not many who knows the difference between that and the old ferro-manganese variety. Well, I own a couple of shares in a foundry that make them. I'm not sure it'll stop a safe cracker completely, though. Well, maybe not all by itself. Anyone tries to break into that vault will get the shock of his life. An electric alarm system, huh? How did you know? I noticed your alarm bell out front. You're a very observant man. Thank you. Mr. Kirby, if I had any doubts about your bank's facilities up to now... I certainly don't have them anymore. You're beginning to sound like one of us already. And as a close friend of Jared's, I want you to come and see me personally anytime you have a banking problem. Yes, sir, I will. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, I'd like to make a small withdrawal on my deposit. Thank you. It's for uh, $200. How would you like it, sir? A couple of fifties, the rest in tens and twenties, please. There you are. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Schuyler. Yes. Front door locks a heaves Rodney type 34A. I can handle that easy. What about the vault, Brett? Ordinary combination lock. Nothing for me, Brett? Ah, very pretty. Uh, but lucky for us. Not very original. Uh, your banker is a thrifty man. Uh, he prints his bills from a stereotype. That's much cheaper than having a new design made up. He prefers to spend his money on the vault. An electric alarm system. Oh? It could be difficult. Well, between you and Ketchy, uh, there won't be any problem for you. Between Ketchy and you, you'll have to count me out. I'm sorry I've done all I intend to do. This is the most ambitious plan we've ever had. And it's only workable if we carry it off as a team, of which you are an indispensable part. I didn't expect to feel this way. I can't do this to Jared Barkley, Clyde. Brad, my friend. We're not doing anything to him. We're doing it to the bank. We're doing it to him. This thing could wreck his whole life. How? The people that keep the money in that bank are his friends. They built this valley together. They trust him the way he trusts me. Sure he trusts you. 
That's why you're here. I can't do it, Clyde. Jared's the closest friend I've ever had. I can't destroy him. Oh. You hear that, catch? This fine young gentleman who unloaded an assortment of handsomely engraved mining stock on the cream of Philadelphia society has suddenly got himself all worked up over a, a friendship. He offered to take me into the law firm. To do what? To run his courthouse errands for him? To be a glorified clerk? Oh, that's all the use he'd have for an inexperienced law school student. Jared wouldn't treat me that way. That's how men like him get rich. Now, they didn't get theirs by giving anything away. No, it's the one who snarls and snaps the hardest is the one who gets to the top. And that's how the Barclays got where they are. And that's why that friend of yours offered you a job. So he could squeeze all the talent out of you with no cost to himself. Oh, uh, you can start inking that press, Ketchy. Won't take me too long to cut these plates. Now uh, everything is going to go as schedule. Well, take the bank tonight. Oh, and uh, you better stay. You might learn something about the art of engraving. I'll be back. You're not still worried about your friend, are you, Brett? Now, we're the only real friends he's got, Ketchy. He knows that. Beautiful. Mm, thank you. I'm glad you like it. I wasn't sure. Well, if she didn't like it, I would. By the way, Brett, have you given any more thought to my offer? Yes, I have, Jared. I've given it a great deal of thought. And I'm not quite sure I understand what it meant. Well, I, uh, I guess it means you'd be coming in as my assistant. Would certainly give you the experience you need. Searching out precedents, writing first drafts of some of your briefs, that sort of thing? <laughs> yes, I'm afraid that's what it would mean while you worked on the more important cases? At first, yes. That's fair enough, isn't it? Yes, it's more than fair, Jared. Pardon us for talking business at the table. And excuse me, I, uh, I have an appointment in town. Don't bother waiting up for me. Aha, uh -huh. well, in that case, you're excused. Good night. Good night, Brett. Well, he didn't exactly keel over with your offer, now did he, Jerry? Maybe he didn't think it was good enough.
your coffee's cold, I'll get you some more. No, 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 thanks. What is it, Jerry? All right. Well, it's... It's Brett. There was someone here to see me the day after he arrived. A Secret Service agent. He accused Brett of being involved in a counterfeit ring. Brett? Oh, no, I, I can't believe that. <laughs> I might as well believe it of myself. He didn't have any proof, but he... He asked me to help him. I did. I didn't find a thing. Not a single word, a deed, a scrap of paper that would make me doubt he was any different than he's always been. And yet I think I doubted him in spite of myself. I know. When somebody puts something like that into your mind, it, it's hard to root it out. It, uh, it just stays there. That's exactly how it's been. You know, when he first got here, I'd have done anything in the world to help him. And then after that man spoke to me, I got less and less sure of him and myself. And now? Do you trust him now? I don't know. I didn't at dinner. I think it showed. I think that's why he left so suddenly. Well, I'm sure you'll find the answer in the morning. Good night, darling. Good night, Mother. Seven left. Nine right. Repeat the last two numbers. Nine right, three left.
seven right. Good morning. Good morning, Brett. You want breakfast, you better grab a chair. Thank you. I've got something to say. Before you do, Brett, there's something I'd like to say. That offer of mine to take you into the office, it's withdrawn. Instead, I'm offering you a full partnership. Now, not that you're going to be any bargain for the first year, but knowing what you're capable of, I'd be wrong to offer you anything less. I want you in with me, Brett, on equal terms. The sooner the better. Brett, it's not like Jared has given something away. He spent an awful long time looking for just the right man. It's wonderful to fulfill something I know you both have always wanted. Well, now that that's settled, what was it you wanted to say? I hate to say this now. I'm leaving for Denver on the noon train. I'm sorry, it's... Just something I have to do. And I uh, have a business meeting at the hotel in town, so I'll have breakfast there. I'm all packed, so uh, I know it's very sudden. Will you be coming back, Brett? I don't know. You'll, uh, you need a buggy. If you do, my offer still stands. Goodbye, man. Goodbye, Brad. I'm sorry, Jared. So am I, Brett. But it's your decision to make. Found this on the table in Mrs. Scholar's room. I guess he forgot it. Thanks, Silas. Oh, 
didn't take you long to say your goodbyes. Uh, catch your ride to Rio Vista. Take a riverboat from there, and I'll get the stage at Manteca, and we'll all meet at Salt Lake day after tomorrow. So we might as well share this all right now. There's not going to be any sharing, Clyde. Well, what do you mean? I'm taking the money back. You're taking it back? We should never have gotten into this. It was a mistake right from the start. Oh, this is surely not the time to stop. I'm worrying taking about the money now. back, and I mean it. about going back in that bank with that money? You're mad, Brett, putting stolen money back in the bank. Such a fool notion. I almost hope you get away with it. I said almost. Morning, Ira. Jared. Say, does a Mr. Schuyler have a reservation on the moon train? He did have, I believe. Yeah, here it is, but he changed it. He's booked on the midnight now. When did he change it? About an hour ago, I guess. Checked his bags and rode out someplace. Thanks, Harry. Oh, Mr. Barkley. Well, Monroe, I thought you'd left town. Oh, nothing I'd like better. Only it don't fit in with my job. I hear your friend deposited quite a bit of money across the street the other day. That's right. All he had in his valise, I guess. I imagine the bank would let you examine it. Oh, I did. I did. And it's good money. And that's a puzzler. Now, the regular method would be for the counterfeiter to deposit some uh, bad paper and then start making withdrawals of the bank's good money. But I guess Mr. Schuyler's got a smarter scheme up his sleeve. Of course, now there's uh, nothing much I can do about it till that uh, counterfeit starts circulating around town here. But uh, whatever he's up to, I got a feeling that bank's gonna be part of it. Skyler been in today. Not far as I know. Well, I thought he might have come in to make a withdrawal. Let me check. No, sir. He hasn't been here today. His account's just the way it was. No more deposits, no withdrawals. Except for a couple of hundred he withdrew the day that you brought him in. But I'm still expecting to do a lot of business with Mr. Skyler, thanks to you. Told me he was transferring more of his funds here. Making his headquarters here in town. Yes, well, I, uh, I wouldn't count on that, Luther. He's leaving town today. He might not be back. Well, no. That's too bad. He, uh, he impressed me as a bright young man. Very intelligent about banking. He's the first man I've had in here who knew exactly what kind of steel that vault door is made of. Even knew about our electric alarm system. Anything wrong, Jared? Hmm? Oh, uh... No, Luther, nothing.
Hold it right there, Brett. Forgot this. Funny. First time I've ever been without it. Hand over your gun. Jared, let me explain. There's nothing to explain. Hand over your gun. Get up your hands, both of you. Uh, get their guns, Ketchy, and the money. Uh, we got here just in time. This wouldn't be your friend Barkley, would it? And uh, tie them up, Ketchy. Get your hands behind your back. What's happening here, Jared? Who's that? The third member of the gang, Sheriff. I've heard some tall stories before in my time, but this one beats them all. Now, I've been trying to figure out what made him think we could possibly swallow a lie as tall as that. It happens to be true. That money Mr. Barkley saw Skyler take out of the vault was counterfeit. Looks like, in a way, we uh, were both right about the man, huh? Sheriff, we talk about disposition in a moment. Fred, I'd, uh... I'd like to have a word with Mr. Schuyler. Well, go ahead, Jared. We'll wait outside. You're going to need a lawyer. Would you trust me to do the job? Why should you? As your friend. I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> 